He is a coward. He ran like a scared little chicken from this parade, trying to slither away in the dark of night. I got to tell you something. When Sue Opera calls Jarrell Brooks Jr. a scared little chicken, that's probably one of the best put downs of the whole trial. How's it going, everyone? You're watching Everything Else Channel on YouTube, everythingelsechannel.com. If at any point in time you like this video, smash that like button. Please subscribe to the channel, ring the bell for notifications, and please leave a comment down below. Also, at the very end, I want to clue you into a new channel that I've got called Truth TV. And I'm going to talk about this trial and other trials, shenanigans, defendants pull, police uh, pullovers, dumb crimes, run the gamut. We're going to cover it over at Truth TV, so please be sure to subscribe there as well. But i got to tell you something. When Sue Opera calls Jarrell Brooks Jr. a scared little chicken, that's when he starts going like this. That's where he starts going like this, and it's almost like he's possessed, and he starts cracking his knuckles, and you can hear it audibly that he's cracking them. And i got to tell you something. You know, I don't like when prosecutors insult criminal defendants and vice versa. I think that it it, 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 it creates sort of a toxic uh, sort of vibe in the courtroom and the courtroom should be all about civility and the procedure and, and decorum that we hear Judge Doro talk about a lot during the trial. But I got to tell you something, and this is no knock on Sue Whopper or the prosecution team, but at the end of the day, I feel like we're all humans, right? And Darrell Brooks Jr. was so toxic and showed zero remorse and stared down the judge, intimidated the victims, you know, intimidated the jury. You know, it, it, it was it was almost like a breaking point of sorts. And I feel that, you know, Sue Opera was 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 carrying the angst and the pain and the sorrow and the anger of so many people in the Waukesha community. And unlike Judge Doro, who had the ability to sometimes you know, dialogue with Brooks. Sometimes he was buttering her up. Sometimes he was putting on an act because he wanted something. But that did not exist between Sue Opper and Gerald Brooks Jr. There was always animosity there. There was always tension there. And Sue Opper had to talk to the victims and the police officers and the first responders, her and her team. And I believe that she was privy to things that we never saw really graphic things that we never saw and had to hear from the victims that were entrusting her and her team to get justice for them and for their loved ones, whether they were with us or had passed on. You got to remember, Jarrell Brooks Jr. killed people during this attack, during this, although he said it wasn't an attack, during this crime. And there were people that were injured both physically, psychologically, and or both. And they were looking to sue to ensure that this man got the full brunt of justice. And it wasn't just about the conviction. It wasn't just about the sentencing. They wanted to see this man squirm. And I tell you, a lot of people wanted to see him take the stand. Not so much so that he could testify, but so that Sue Opper and her team could tear him to pieces. Now, obviously, like a scared little chicken, he didn't take the stand. He had ample opportunity to do it. He forfeited his right to testify. But I believe that that forfeiture was intentional. I do not believe that he wanted to square up with Sue Opper or anyone on her team. And when she called him a scared little chicken, he just all about lost it. He could not process. Number one, I think that it's abundantly clear that Gerald Brooks Jr. has an issue with women. I mean, look what he did to Erica Patterson. And we don't know about his other relationships, but it stands to reason that if he treated Erica like that, he probably treated other women like that as well. And you look at the relationship with Dawn and you look at the relationship with Dr. Mary Edwards and the roommate from Nevada, and you start to kind of paint a picture for yourself. And it's not a very good one. You know, I think that he likes women that basically do what he says. And if they don't, well, then... I mean, look, uh, Erica Patterson, by all accounts, was probably the woman that he loved the most. And I, I got to be honest with you, I don't think that Darrell Brooks Jr. is capable of love. You know, so so if he was able to do that to Erica, imagine what he did to other women. 
And I'm sure that there are many, many women that he dated who were victims of DV, who were victims of probably worse. Again, you know, what happened, you know, for the Waukesha Christmas Parade, I believe there were, there were uh, things, red flags in his past. He used a vehicle against Erica Patterson. He had a history of violent offenses. You know, he had a dysfunctional home. And so, you know, again, we can blame other courts. We can blame other prosecutors. We can blame other judges for the fact that he basically got slaps on the wrist when really he could have done some serious time. But nobody could have ever imagined that he was going to do what he did at the Walker Shark Christmas Parade. But the reality of the matter, though, is, is that when Sue Opper, a strong, independent, you know, uh, self-made woman, calls him a scared little chicken, he can't take that. He can't process that. When she says he has no remorse, he can't process that. He cannot be called out by her. Now, when Zach Woodchow basically took him to task because of the grooming and the whole way that he met Erica Patterson, that was a different kind of anger. But it was not an anger like that which we saw against Sue Opper. It was an anger where, you know, he felt maybe his manhood was being questioned. And, you know, he's like, you don't know the full story. And we got to keep the record straight. But when it came to Sue, he was just, he couldn't contain himself. When he's going back and forth like that, tell me that didn't remind you of the original Exorcist when Linda Blair basically has to be strapped down to the bed and she still comes up and she goes down and she comes up and, she, and that's what it looked like. It looked like he was possessed and maybe he was to a certain extent, not by the devil, but by just pure evil. Like I believe that, you know, there are good people and there are evil people. And you may argue that Darrell Brooks Jr. had an evil moment when he did what he did, but I would contend that, that he's an evil person. Because there's just so much evil in his life. And even though his grandma is, a, you know, a, a Eucharistic minister and a missionary and, and, you know, a hostage negotiator, whatever else she is, a crisis management expert and has a podcast, I don't care. You know, and I don't even know how legitimate she is, to be honest with you. She went to a, a biblical P.O. box school and, and, and who knows? You know, she's got a podcast and, you know, you go on her website and it doesn't seem like she's been making any new podcasts. It just seems like the podcasts she made were kind of like timed around the trial. I mean, that's what it looks like. And again, perception matters for a lot, right? I mean, you know, it matters to me and I'm making the video. So, I mean, it, it's in the eye of the beholder. But like I said, to me, he just could not grasp being called out by a woman who actually, you know, had all the power. Because in another clip, Sue Opper says, look, this guy is used to having all the power, and right now he has none. And there again, you see Gerald Brooks totally lose it because he cannot process what Sue Opper's saying. And what Sue Opper's saying is 100% factual. He just can't process it. He just can't. But what say you? What say you about when Sue Opper calls Gerald Brooks Jr. a scared little chicken? As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please check out Truth TV on YouTube. And for this video, please smash that like button. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts because it's your thoughts that inspire me to make new videos. Thanks for watching. Everything else channel on YouTube.